Everybody's talking about AI agents right now, but they come with a risk. And that is they can make mistakes and do things like spam your social media, send out an email blast by mistake, or just end up in these really dangerous feedback loops. I'm going to show you a vital technique that will make your agents way more reliable. We're calling this an agent safeguard. This technique absolutely guarantees that your approval will be sought before any key actions. I recently covered how to build an AI agent using make.com and OpenAI assistance on this channel. We're interacting with this agent via Telegram. We can ask this bot to research topics, generate images, and publish to Facebook. The make.com scenario is surprisingly simple. And within this agent, we're specifying tools such as this perplexity scenario, this image tool scenario, and this post into Facebook scenario. The AI agent from there is able to figure out what tool to call and when, but it comes with a risk. It could post to Facebook by mistake or without our approval. In this video, I'm going to show you how we add an agent safeguard to this Facebook posting tool to guarantee that it's going to seek our approval before posting it. By the way, if you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community where you'll get access to all of our automation templates, including this one. I'm going to start with a demo and then after that I'll go through the entire process for how you can use this technique in your own agents. So I'm asking this to research the topic OpenAI 03 Mini and draft a Facebook post. As we're waiting for that, here it's going to hit our main make.com scenario. It's going to go to the OpenAI Assistant, and we're expecting it's going to call Perplexity via our research tool. And this is just a simple scenario within make.com with this webhook. Again, check out the link in the description if you want a bit more information about how they work. Okay, this is the response. It's pretty concise, looks good enough for our testing. Now I'll say looks good, generate an image. And now as that's happening, I'm expecting that it's gonna call this AI image tool behind the scenes, which is this micro template that we've set up within make.com. We're using file.ai to generate flux one images. There we have an image generated. It looks pretty cool and futuristic. It's not massively relevant to this context. So we could have a back and forth conversation to get that right. And also update the prompting within our OpenAI assistant for this exact use case. But to demonstrate this concept, I'm gonna keep going with this and then I'll just ask it to post this to Facebook. Now we have this interesting new message, which is, this is the agent safeguard. Please click on this link to publish this post to Facebook. And then it shows us the post text. We can click on this link and it opens up the image link. So once we click on this link, and now we have a pretty much instant response to say that this is the agent safeguard, your post has been published to Facebook. So let's have a look at Facebook. Perfect, there we see the post has been published. We have the text as we wanted it and the image that was generated by Flux1. Let's break down what happened there. Once we got to the stage where the assistant was ready to post to Facebook, it called the new version of our Facebook posting tool, which looks like this within make.com. And remember in our main scenario, within the main OpenAI assistant, we just connected this Facebook posting tool via webhook to this scenario. And this is not posting anything to Facebook. What it's doing is it's saving an approval key within a data store in make.com. And then behind the agent's back, it's effectively just sending a direct message to the Telegram bot. And we've coded that here. This is the agent safeguard please click on this link to publish the post to Facebook. The OpenAI assistant is completely unaware of this link that's been sent to our Telegram bot. So it's impossible for the OpenAI assistant to trigger this link and therefore they cannot post to Facebook without us clicking on this link. This is way safer than trying to build in approval into the OpenAI assistant prompts because it's still very possible that the agent can make mistakes and misinterpret your directions. And when you're sending this Telegram bot, make sure to disable link previews at the very end because Otherwise, Telegram might visit that link and then trigger the creation of the post on Facebook. And by the way, in this workflow, if you do not click this link within two hours, it expires and will not work in the future. Of course, you can adjust that however you want. How does this work? When the OpenAI Assistant requests to post to Facebook, it hits this webhook, it goes to this tool, which is this set multiple variables. We're gonna create this approval key and it's creating this hash. So what it's doing is it's getting a random number, mixing a timestamp, has a secret key in here. You can change that to whatever you want. And then from that, we get this really long approval key. We're then saving that approval key in a data store. And within this data store, we have the approval ID, the request type, which is Facebook. So this is one data store that could work for lots of different social networks across different automations. We have the status, which is published in this case and the text content and the image link. This is all stored within this data store and ready for the user to click the link within Telegram. We then send this Telegram bot message. It's identifying itself as the agent safeguard. Please click on this link and it's the webhook URL and the approval key. The end result of this is that we'll have this link sent to us that we can click for approval. When we click on that link, that directly triggers this second part of the scenario. 
And this completely bypasses the OpenAI Assistant. So there's no possibility of mistakes or confusion because we're triggering it directly. It's gonna get the approval ID that was embedded in the link. So how do we do that? We get this URL. Within this webhook, we can copy this webhook to our clipboard. As you see there, that's the webhook URL that we use to hit the scenario. But we've added in this approval ID at the end and added in our unique approval key. That's exactly what you see here. You have the approval URL and we're constructing this approval ID at the very end and adding in the approval key that we generated earlier on. Here, we're trying to find that approval ID within the data store, such as as you see here, and it's only gonna return it if the status is open and if the request type is Facebook. If that had already been published before, it will not pick it up. From there, we have a bunch of routers and responses to Telegram, but these are only to handle edge cases such as if the ID does not exist, if it cannot find anything in the data store, and if the link has expired. The main thing you should be interested in is this post to Facebook. If there is not an image link, it will create a Facebook text post. It will update the data store to mark it as published. So it'll mark that particular record as published as you see here. This will then send a direct response to Telegram, such as here where we see the post has been published to Facebook. Once the OpenAI Assistant called the Facebook posting tool, that sends a direct secret approval link to your Telegram channel. And then as a separate action entirely, that user clicks on the approval link, it goes to the second part of this Facebook posting tool, and then that directly sends a Telegram response. This is effectively a hard-coded workflow, but our OpenAI Assistant decides when to start triggering it, but it does not have the full capability to do the final publishing. So if you're building an AI agent, and if there are certain parts of the workflow where you just absolutely cannot accept blunders or mistakes in certain actions, such as posting to an email list or to your Facebook account or sending an email to a client, then this is an extremely reliable method where you can guarantee a human in the loop approval will be required for certain actions. And you do not need to use data stores for this. You could also use an Airtable base or any other type of external database. And if you want to get way ahead in your AI automation journey, then check out the link in the description to our community where you'll get access to all of our automations, including the one in this video. You can get direct support from us via our live workshops and through our active discussion boards.